Hello there. Welcome back. Today's session is entitled Relationships of Points and Lines. Before, we know that points and lines are two of the three undefined terms in geometry. Today, we're, go we're going to talk about their relationships. Here are the key terms you need to watch out for today's session. We have the distance. We also have midpoint, intersecting lines, points of intersection. We also have concurrent lines and the point of concurrency. Aside from this, we have perpendicular lines, parallel lines, and lastly, skew lines. You need to watch out for these terms because these are very important for today's session. Before anything else, let's talk about the real number line. I know you're all familiar about the real number line. It is actually the best form of the relationship of points and lines. You have this line, and you have these points that lie on the same line. In the real number line, oftentimes we have numbers or values for each point. Now, let's talk about these points here. Aside from the values given by the real number line, you can also, of course, name these points. You have point A at 0, and you also have point B at 3. This means that A is equal to 0 and B is equal to 3. The length of AB talks about how far is B from A and vice versa. This is actually similar to the measurement of AB with this symbol. This symbol means measurement of A and B. The length and measurement of AB is actually the first relationship we're going to talk today. It's actually the distance of AB. Distance of AB is the same as the measurement of AB. They have the symbols. Now, what about the measurement of AB? Do you know what is the measurement of AB? Try to analyze what do you think is the measurement of A and B for 20 seconds. Time is up. Now, what do you think is the measurement of A, B? Any idea? Yes, you're correct. The measurement of A, B, or its distance, is actually 3. Now we know that the measurement of A, B, or its distance, is 3, but we don't know how. Do you have any idea? Well, those are good ideas. Probably you said 0 plus 3. Is it really 0 plus 3? Or is it 0 minus 3? Let's find out. Let's add another letter C at negative 2. And let's find out what is the measurement of CB or the distance of C from B or vice versa in 20 seconds. You may use these two relationships that you have gathered, or probably you have any idea, other idea to solve for the distance. We're not sure yet whether it's 0 plus 3 or it's minus. You have 5 seconds. Time is up. Now, if we're going to consider the first situation as true, that we're going to add 0 and 3, what do you think will happen for the distance or the measurement of CB? If we're going to consider 0 plus 3, then probably that would become negative 2 plus 3 and it's 1. But it's not. Why? Because CB is longer than AB. So it cannot be. It should be greater than 3 which is AB. So it's not 1. How about the second situation? Is it 0 mi minus 3 or negative 2 minus 3? Negative 5? Probably, but it's still wrong. 
Take note, we're talking about the distance. Distance is always positive. So it's not plus 3, a plus, you're not going to add, not going to subtract, but is it the absolute value of the difference? Let's find out. If it's negative 2 minus 3, that's negative 5. Absolute value of negative 5 is 5. It's longer than 3, longer than AB, and it's not negative, and therefore, that's the correct distance. So what do you think? We're just going to get the absolute value of the difference. Let us add more points here. And now, I would like you to get the following Using what we learned, again, it's not addition, it's not subtraction, it's absolute value of the difference. 20 seconds. How about EF, FG, or GC? Time is up. Let us use the same thing we did earlier. It's not plus, it's not minus, but it's the absolute value of the difference. For EF, is it 2? Negative 3 minus negative 1, that becomes negative 3 plus 1. Negative 2, absolute value of negative 2 is 2. Correct. How about FG? Is your answer 3? Let's try. Negative 1 as F minus 2 as G. Negative 3, absolute value of negative 3 is 3. That's also correct. How about GC? Negative 2 minus negative 2, that's 2 plus 2, 4, absolute value of 4. Very good. However, you can still count. Look at G to C. You can jump 4 steps. F to G, 3 steps. E and F, 2 steps. So shall we accept it? absolute value of the difference? Yes. That is how we are going to compute distance. Absolute value of the difference of the values of the points. Aside from distance, our second relationship is actually called as midpoint. I'll give you situations here so that you would know how to define midpoint, what the midpoint is. If the midpoint of F, B is D, which is actually 1, if the midpoint of EF is C, which is actually negative 2, and if the midpoint of AB has no particular point, but actually measured as 3 halves or 1 and 1 half or 1.5, I want you to define what is a midpoint. And if you're done, try also to get how do we get what a midpoint is. You have 20 seconds. Look at these situations. If these situations are true, what is a midpoint? And how do we get a midpoint? Time is up. So how do we get the midpoint now? But first, we need to know what is a midpoint. A midpoint, from its name, mid-middle point. It is a point in between, just like in F to B. The middle point is D, and it corresponds to 1. As well as EF, it's C, negative 2. However, for AB, voila. So we have here this formula, actually. You just add the two values of two points, and then you divide it into 2. Use the same situation. Get the midpoint of FG. Is it 1 half? Yes, it's 1 half. That's negative 1 plus 2 is positive 1 all over 2. It's 1 half. That is a midpoint. Now, let's talk about lines. Let's consider this figure. We have line M and line L. We have here point C. These two lines here are called intersecting lines. If this is true, and the figure is true, define intersecting lines.
time is up. If this situation is true, intersecting lines are actually two coplanar lines that intersect. They are two lines on the same plane and they intersect. Point C, the common point of both lines, is called the point of intersection. How about if I will add another line here? Let's say line L passing through the same point C. Now, they're not just called intersecting, but they're called concurrent lines. In 20 seconds, define concurrent lines. Hmm, you have five seconds left. Probably you know already what to do. Okay, time is up. How did you define concurrent lines? Yes, three or more coplanar lines that intersect at exactly one point. There are three or more lines and there only is only one point of concurrency. Instead of calling it point of intersection, it is point of concurrency. The next pair of line is this two lines here. Still, line L, line M. This is a given figure. They are called perpendicular lines. Now I want to define what perpendicular lines are. 20 seconds. Notice the box figure. Probably it means something. Time is up. Actually, perpendicular lines are also intersecting lines, but they have a special relationship. They intersect at a 90 degree angle. That box there is a symbol for a 90 degree angle, which you will know later on in the next session. Our second to the last pair of lines, or group of lines, is these three lines here. Let's say we still have L and, and M. Notice these three lines is, are different from the other. They are called parallel lines. If these three lines are parallel lines, what are parallel lines? Time is up. Now, what do you think parallel lines are? They're actually, yes, three or more coplanar lines that do not intersect. They are still on the same plane. However, we also have lines here, such as this. We have now two different planes, line L and line M on two different planes. They're called skew lines. What are skew lines now? Again, notice that line L and line M are on different planes. Time is up. Skew lines st are still lines that do not intersect. However, they are non-coplanar lines. Probably similar to parallel lines, but they are non-coplanar lines. These are the key terms you need to remember from our lesson session for today. Distance, midpoint, intersecting lines and the point of intersection, concurrent lines and the point of concurrency, the perpendicular lines, parallel lines, and skew lines. Review these terms from time to time because these are very important for our next class. If you were able to view this video, simply comment the first three letters of your surname in the comment section of Schoology. That is for me to know that you were able to view this video. That's it. See you next time. 
hopefully you've learned today. Our next session is entitled Angles and Angle Pairs. Please review this video from time to time and please prepare for our next session, Angles and Angle Pairs. We will have an activity in our class. The next meeting we will meet. Thank you and have a nice day. Congratulations.